I don't know about you, but I was glad when they said we were going to play football again, and I couldn't wait until the teams got out on the field and started playing real games. Now, I don't know if you were paying attention, but the Titans had a little controversy over the summer, and that was who was going to be the kicker. They let Neil Joseph go, and they hung on to a guy by the name of Steven Goskowski. Now, Goskowski has a great past, a, a, a great track record of making game-winning field goals when they are needed to be made. Except the first game, he had a little trouble. He was in Denver. Titans were playing the Denver Broncos. And Denver is a great place for a kicker because of the altitude. You can kick the ball a mile in Mile House Stadium. So Groskowski misses three. One, two, three. He misses the first three. Because of those misses, the game comes down to the wire. The Titans take the ball down the field. There's very little time left on the clock. There's only time for Goskowski to come out and kick one more time. Now, he's already missed three. What's he going to do with the fourth one? Well, you know how it ended. He made the fourth one, and now everybody loves Stephen Goskowski because, you know, all you have to do is finish well. Sometimes in life, it doesn't matter how you start as much as it does how you end. It's Paul's last letter. He's coming to the end of that letter. So you shouldn't be surprised that one of the things he's concerned about is ending well. He wants to end well. He wants Timothy to end well. And as we read these verses together, you'll begin to understand that Paul wants you and me to end well too. So stand with me in honor of God's word. It's chapter four in 2 Timothy, and we're gonna pick up reading with verse six. For I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I kept the faith. There is reserved for me now a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but to all of those who love his appearing. Make every effort to come see me soon. Demas has deserted me. Since he has loved this present world and gone to Thessalonica, Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia, only Luke is with me. Bring Mark with you, for he is useful to me in the ministry. I have sent Tychius to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak I left in Troas with Carpus, as well as the scrolls, especially the parchments. Alexander the carpersmith did me great harm, and the Lord will repay him according to his works." Watch out for him yourself, because he strongly opposes our words. At my first offense, no one stood with me. Everyone had deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that I might fully preach the word to all the, and all the Gentiles may hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. And the Lord will rescue me from the evil, every evil work, and will bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. There is now waiting on me a, righteous, a crown of righteousness, which Jesus the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but to all of those who love his appearing. This is God's word for God's people. Hear it. Believe it and live. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, with all of the distractions of our life, with all of the things that vie for our attention, we are tempted to take our attention, our eyes off of what really matters. You and your gospel and preaching it as long as we have breath to preach. So we pray like Paul, we'll be able to write that we have fought the good fight, finished the race, kept the faith, and we're eagerly awaiting the crown that you yourself will give to us. 
Until that day, we pray these things. Amen. Everyone had left him. He was now in Rome, in prison, and now everybody who had promised to stay with him, well, they had left. Now, not all the people abandoned him. It wasn't always a bad leaving. I mean, for instance, Titus went to Dalmatia. There were others who were sent to places of ministry, churches to take care of. But you know, leaving is always a grief. Even when you're sending your child off to start their new life as a college student or they've joined one of the uh, armed services and they're gonna serve their country, you are proud of them, you want them to go and do well, you just wish it didn't mean they had to go. Paul loved being involved in other Christians' lives, other pastors' lives. He loved being involved in Timothy's life. And now when he had to leave them, or when they had to leave him, and he would send them to another place of ministry, he would miss them. There would be a grief. One of the things that happens in kingdom life is that Jesus is always moving people to where they serve him best, not to where it's necessarily best for you or more comfortable for you. So sometimes friends move away. Sometimes people go to other churches. Sometimes, well, and you just miss them. Paul was lonely in Rome. He was lonely because his friends were going to other places of ministry. He was lonely because some had abandoned him. You know, being Paul's friend was hard. Uh, you read all of the stories in Acts, and there were riots and people chasing Paul and people throwing rocks at Paul and people throwing prison, uh, Paul in prison. And if you were a friend of Paul, well, what happened to Paul happened to you. It was tough being Paul's friend. And so people like Demas found it hard to stay with him. The only thing Paul tells us about Demas is that he loved this world. It happens. A young man graduates seminary, wants to pastor a church, but is not quite ready for what, well, what pastoring your first church means. So he moves into the parsonage. It leaks. It's cold in winter and hot in the summer. It's not quite what he and his wife had expected. It's a little tougher. Do you know half the people who graduate seminary aren't in the ministry at all within five years of their graduation? There are a lot of people like Demas, people with potential, people with promise, who for whatever reason don't stay. And when they don't stay, there is grief. So now Paul was not only by himself, he was grieving the loss of good friends who had gone to other places. He was grieving the loss of people who had betrayed him. And now he is feeling the entire weight of the Roman Empire on him. So what's his answer? <laughs> Come see me. Come see me as fast as you can. In my family, we called it the two-hour goodbye. Anytime you wanted to leave my home, you had to plan it two hours ahead of time. I had to sneak over to Jeannie and say, listen, we really want to be out of here by four, so we need to start leaving at two. Because my dad would say goodbye to you in the den. We would have to say goodbye again in the kitchen. We would have to say goodbye again in the foyer on the front porch, down the front steps, as I was getting into the car, as I was finally in the car, my dad would reach in and hug me one more time, always asking me the same thing. When are you going to come see me? And Paul, father to Timothy in the faith that he was, wants to see Timothy. It's because Paul feels the weight of the end coming. He knows it. And he wants to see Timothy one more time. Bring Mark with you because he encourages me. I, I love hearing his story again. I would like you guys here because the first time I was put on trial here, nobody helped me. Nobody came. 
Now, when you hear Paul say, listen, there was a first offense, what does that imply? That implies there's going to be a second defense. Either the trial wasn't finished or someone had appealed the case or some other judge was going to hear it. But did you notice what Paul wanted in preparation for that next offense? He wanted his scrolls. He wanted the parchments. You know what he wanted? He wanted scriptures. Because for Paul... When he was put on trial, his defense was not, quoted, was not a quotation of Roman law. He was not telling Festus or Agrippa or Felix or Caesar himself why I shouldn't be here according to your own law. Anytime Paul was given a platform, he did the same thing. He preached the gospel. At the end of Acts, he preaches a sermon so passionately and so pointedly to King Agrippa that Paul feels led to give an invitation. And Agrippa almost responds. You can imagine when he was brought up in front of Caesar, when he was brought up in front of the other Roman officials there in the city of Rome, that every time Paul had the chance, he would preach the gospel. He wanted those documents, those parchments, those scrolls, so he could prepare better for the next time he had to preach. Because did you see it? The Lord saved me. The Lord was with me. The Lord saved me. Got me out of there so I could continue to preach. I wasn't rescued so I would just be safe. I wasn't rescued so that I would be able to tell everybody I was falsely accused. No. I was saved by Jesus Christ out of that mess so I could continue to preach so that every Gentile, every unbeliever, everyone who didn't know would be able to hear the gospel. He saved me out of the lion's mouth. Do you know what story that goes back to? Does it remind you of anything? Sure. It's the story of Daniel. Remember, Daniel was faithful. The king said, don't pray. And Daniel prayed anyway, and they threw him in the lion's den. And God saved Daniel from the lions. Paul said, they told me not to preach. I preached anyway. They threw me in the lions metaphorically. And I was saved so I could keep on Preaching for Paul, nothing else mattered but being able to preach one more time. In Romans, he writes, how can they believe in someone that they've never heard about? And how can they hear unless someone tell them? And how can someone tell them unless someone is sent to tell them? For Paul, that was him. I was sent to tell the Gentiles about the good news of God in Christ Jesus. And I was rescued from the trial. I was rescued from the lion's mouth. Also, I could just keep on preaching. Because Paul knew he was running out of time. Did you see what he said? I'm already being poured out. You know where that goes back to? Remember? Philippians 2, that beautiful hymn of Jesus. Jesus, Paul tells us, we should have the same mind that he does. That Jesus, being equal with God, did not think equality with God was something to be snatched, grab hold of. But he emptied himself. Same word, same phrase, same, same image. He poured himself out. And now, there's nothing left. He has emptied himself for the gospel. And Paul says, I'm waiting for the time when the righteous judge, did you hear that little slap? Huh? Are you paying attention? Did you hear the little slap to Caesar? Yes, I have stood in front of all of Rome's judges, and I don't care what their verdict is. The only verdict I want to hear is from the Lord Jesus Christ, the righteous judge. And he will give me a crown of righteousness. 
because I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I kept the faith. And now, I'm ready to go. If my time is here, I'm okay with that. I'm ready to stand before Jesus. I love the moment of his appearing. You know, with all the things going on in 2020, the second coming has become a new subject. It is back into the things that we talk about now, and everybody wants to know, well, is this a sign of the end times? Is this a sign of Jesus coming back? And we figured out, is there any way we can figure up all of this 2020 stuff and make it add up to 666? Ah, but here's a little secret that only you and I are going to say, aren't we? You know, you're not going to say it out loud. You're going to say, hey, Aren't we looking forward to Jesus coming back? Well, you know, one day the Lord's coming back and inside you're going, oh, please, Jesus, not now. Oh, please, Jesus, not yet. Let me get this one thing fixed. Let me get this one thing worked out. Let me change this, do something with that. Then you can come back. But not all of us are excited about his appearing, are we? And that's the test, isn't it? Are you really excited about Jesus coming back? Can you not wait to share with him what you've done, what you have seen? Can you not wait to begin that conversation of all that's been going on around you and in you and through you? Or are you trying to list more excuses? You do know he's coming back. You do know there'll be a judgment, a test, where you and I will have to stand in front of Jesus and give an account. Here is what you invested in me, Lord Jesus, and here's what I did with the time and the talent and the resources and the opportunities. Is that going to be a fun moment for you? Is it going to be a fun moment for me? Do we love his appearing? Paul knew something. We all know it. It's the same thing the kicker of the Titans found out that first ball game. The only thing that matters is that you finish well. Like Paul, you and I only have so much time. The time of our departure is coming soon. When it does, will you finish well? Let's pray together. How eager we are, O oh Lord, for you to return, to finish what you have started in each of us, to finish what you have started in creation so that we can begin the praise and worship of you that won't ever end. Until that time, help us keep running the race, fighting the good fight. Help us keep the faith. We pray this in your name. Amen. I don't know where you are right now. I don't know your story. Here's what I do know. None of us, not me, not you, not any of us, have as much time as we thought we did. None of us have as much time as we wish we did. Sooner or later, time ends for all of us. And in that moment, Will you finish well? Will you be able to celebrate the appearance of Christ in your life? Will you be able to anticipate it with joy? For that's the only thing that matters. If you're not sure how you want to answer that question, we'd love to talk with you. Will you text CONNECT to 623-623? 
and we'll be in touch with you as soon as we can. If you want to know more about our church or if we can minister to you in any way, use the same formula. Connect 623-623. We'll be in touch with you as soon as we can. God bless you for being with us today. Thank you for doing it, and we'll see you next time.